While JavaScript allows us to mutate objects, we might choose not to allow ourselves and fellow programmers to do so. One of the best examples of this in the JavaScript world today is when we're setting state in a React application. If we mutate our current state rather than creating a new copy of the current state, we can encounter hard to diagnose issues. In this post, we roll our own immutability function by using the built-in JavaScript proxy object. So just a quick refresh, uh, what, what is object mutation? So importantly, object mutation is when we change a property on an object or array. This is quite different from reassignment in which we point a, to a different object reference altogether. Here are a couple examples of mutation versus reassignment. So for mutation, we can say const person equals an object with name of Bo. And then we can say person.name equals Jack. So we are mutating this object uh, to change the name key to be the string Jack. So let's talk about reassignment now. So reassignment, let pet equals to name daffodil and type dog. And so if we wanted to do reassignment, we could say pet, the entire variable is now going to point to, at an object with the name whiskers and the type is going to be cat. And that's reassignment. So we can see in the first example that the person object is being mutated. In the second example, the pet variable is simply being reassigned. Uh, we have to keep in mind that this also applies to other types of objects like arrays. So we can say const people equals an array, Jack, Jill, Bob, and Jane. And then, of course, if we wanted to mutate uh, the first index, so if we wanted to mutate this, we could say people1 equals Bev. And again, if we wanted to talk about reassignment, we can say that let pets equal daffodil whiskers and ladybird. And then, of course, we can reassign and say pets now equals moose and biscuit. And again, so just a couple examples to recall that object mutation is quite different than reassignment. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, potential unintended consequences of object mutation. So I'm going to just clear all this out and we are going to create a new person. Uh, let's go ahead and just say this person has the name of Bo again. And then we are going to say we want to create another person. Uh, and we will say this other person will set it by default equal to our initial person. And then we say other person dot name. OK, actually, we want this person's name to be Finn. Great. So of course, our unintended consequence here is that if we log our initial person and we run this in the console, yeah, we see that our initial person, uh, we may not have intended this, but the name for our initial person object is Finn, because in reality, other person and person are pointing to the same object in memory. And so we have mutated that one object in memory, and now we see the unintended consequence here. So how can we sort of roll our own solution to get around this? Well, I am going to postulate that we can do this using the built-in JavaScript proxy object. Uh, one thing I will say is there are some great solutions like immutable.js and immer.js that in a production environment you should definitely reach for first. I would not recommend using this approach just because it's not going to be as thoroughly tested and well thought out as some of those other solutions. And also, as you'll see, I'm only going to kind of partially implement this. It's not going to really account for all of the mutable methods on an object. So yeah, let's, uh, let's see what we can do. We're going to create a person object now. And again, we'll say name is Bo, but we'll also give this an animal's key. And uh, one of Bo's animals is going to be of type dog and will be named daffodil. Okay, great. This person, there's a person and there's an array of animals with just one element. 
So let's create a function called immutable. And this will take any old object. And this will return a new proxy object. And the first argument is the initial object. And then the second argument is going to be an object that represents essentially the methods on our object that we will be proxying. So the first method on our object that I am going to want to proxy is the setter. This is the most obvious. So what we're going to want to do is that if we try to set a property on our object, we want to throw a new error and just say immutable. In other words, you cannot change this. So that's great. But what we're going to find is that if we create a new proxy on person, let's say immutable person equals immutable person. So theoretically, I should be able to say immutable person dot name equals Joe, and this should get mad at me. And if I run this, sure enough, if I expand my console a little bit, we say, no, we are mad. This is immutable. Uh, and that's great. But what if I say immutable person dot animals and the zeroth animal is going to now be of type cat and have the name whiskers. And if I run this in the console, yeah, we actually have no error. And the problem here is that while we've created this immutable object on our root level, what happens is when we access animals, animals is no longer immutable. So we want to be able to do this all the way down our object tree. And the way we can do that is by handling the getter on our proxy object. So the getter will take a target argument, which will be referring to the object at hand, and then prop, which is the prop we are trying to access on that object. And what we can do is we can return that if the type of our target's prop, if that equals object, and importantly, it's important to remember that uh, an object is of type object, but so is an array. So this will work here. Uh, if it is of type object, then we can call immutable on target prop. And this is pretty cool. We're basically recursively calling this immutable function as we go down our object tree. So if it is not an object, then we can say, okay, let's just return target prop. All right. So now what we've done is theoretically, once we say immutable person dot animal, as soon as we access the dot animals prop, it should say, oh, this is a type of object. Let's return uh, an immutable instance of this object, this array. So if I run this now, sure enough, we are mad uh, because we are trying to mutate something that is immutable. So this is awesome. Uh, this is actually where I'm going to stop. There are other methods that like if you were to try to take this all the way to make it actually an immutable, a, a perfectly immutable library, you might want to look at the, uh, the delete method and other sorts of important mutable methods on our objects. But I'll stop for here because I think you get the idea.